So today we're working on a uh, 04 Ford Explorer. The problem we're having is it does not shift out of park. So put our foot on the brake. It will not. Shift lever will not come out of park. So first thing we're going to do is just pull this little plastic cover off so that we can get a look at what's going on inside. So if we look down in here, under the shift cut lever, we have this little solenoid here. And when we put our foot on the brake, this little pin is supposed to drop down like that. So if we see right now, it's actually working. Because this is an intermittent issue. But if we pull out of park, go back into park, now our pin is up. Pushing on the brake doesn't do anything. So the first thing we need to check is if our brake lights are coming on. Because if the brake light sensor is not working, that will not allow the shifter to come out of park. So if you have a second person, it's ideal so to get someone to step on the brake while you check the brake lights. But if you're doing this alone like I am, just take a block of wood and jam it up against the seat. And our brake lights are on, so we know the Brake sensor is not the issue. So now to, let's take a closer look at our solenoid. But first, to do that, we have to get some of this other stuff out of the way. So to pull this plastic wire case down, we need a 7 32nds inch socket, quarter inch socket. And we need to pull our couple of bolts out that hold this in place. So now that these wires are out of the way, remove the two Torx head bolts holding the shift solenoid in place, and pop it out. Now I need to take a pair of pliers and pull this connection tab out. So I'm going to do that now. Now let's bench test our shift solenoid. Now on this particular style of shift lock solenoid, the two outer pins are hot, or positive, and the middle pin is a ground. So to test this, I'm going to use a power probe you can use straight wires from a battery, but I have this, and this is a much safer way to do it. So I've got both outer pins connected to the positive terminal of the battery, and I'm going to carefully supply a ground to the middle pin. So as you can see, the solenoid is working repeatedly, so that's not our issue. So now that we've tested this solenoid and have confirmed that it is working properly, let's go back to the vehicle and dig further. So now with our multimeter connected to a good ground, we're going to test our leads. So let's try the hots first. Touch the green one, and we have a 12 volt constant voltage. Let's try the white one now. So there's currently zero volts, but when I put my foot on the brake, we get voltage. So we've confirmed that we have 
both full, full hot wires are working. So now let's turn our d multimeter to continuity and check our ground. That's the middle pin, and there is no continuity. You can hear if I touch my ground, we have uh, the ringer sounds because we have continuity, meaning a direct connection. But this ground, with the foot on the brake or off, there is no continuity. So we have narrowed down our ground wire is bad. So this is an extra wire harness I have for this vehicle. This is where the, the shift lock solenoid connects, and this is where it connects to the vehicle. So let's look at this ground wire, this black wire here, and follow it up. You can see it comes from the vehicle into this switch here, then it comes out of this switch and into the solenoid. And this is that switch on the vehicle right here. If you can see what it does when we come out of park, it activates that switch. And what that commands the shift solenoid to turn off because it doesn't need to be activated or in the down position after it is out of park. Then when it come when you go to put it back in the park, the lever drops down and it activates that solenoid again. So down underneath the dash, this is that connector right here. So let's first check our ground for continuity right here. That's this black wire all the way to the left. You can see, same up here, the black wire all the way to the left. I'm going to touch that wire, and we have continuity. So we know we have a good ground here. Let's plug that in. Now let's back probe wire here and check it after the connection. You can hear we have a good ground there as well. So now let's test the switch up here. This is the wire coming from the vehicle chassis and this is the wire going to the shift solenoid. So let's check the first one, and we have continuity, meaning we have a good ground. Now let's check it after the switch, and no matter how far I push the probe in, we do not have ground. And we are in park. So we should be getting a ground signal through the switch telling that solenoid to move to the downward position in order to shift out of park. So we have confirmed that this switch is bad. So now we need to replace it. And I have this old harness here. This all replaces as one harness. 
So first thing we need to do is disconnect our battery. With the battery removed, we need to remove the two 8mm bolts holding the airbag on. Now with the, the bolts removed, carefully remove the wire harnesses connecting to the airbag. Now to remove the steering wheel, we need to remove the Torx head bolt in the center of the steering wheel. Now the easiest way to remove the steering wheel is to simply just take with two hands and smack it all the way around the steering wheel until it starts to come off. I do highly suggest taking a marker, a sharpie or a paint stick or something and marking the position of the steering wheel on this spindle here so that you can put it on, back on exactly how it came off. This will work even if the steering wheel seems really tight. Now it is very loose and we can carefully pull it off. Now we remove the two wire harnesses holding it in place. Make that one wire harness. Now we'll remove the two Phillips head bolts. One here, and one down here. Now let's remove the blinker and washer controller by pushing this little tab on the top and lifting it straight out. And removing the wire harnesses connected to it. Next, carefully remove this steering section. You can remove the wire harnesses from the back, or just let it hang if you want to. Next, we need to remove these two Torx head bolts holding this bracket in place. With the bolts removed, the bracket will slide out of place, and both switches will pop off. Now just fish the wire harness out and replace it with the new one. Now if you're getting this part at the junkyard, I highly suggest taking this bracket with it because if you try to separate this clip here, you're going to end up breaking it and then it won't work very well on the vehicle. Alright, before we go any further, I'm going to reconnect the battery and test this circuit. As you can see, now the circuit is working properly. As I press and release the brake, the pin is dropping. That allows the shifter to drop out of park. Now that we know this is working, I can reconnect 
re-disconnect the battery and continue the reassembly. Now using our mark from earlier, we're going to reinstall the steering wheel and secure with the correct bolt. Now we just need to reinstall the trim and take it for a test drive. So that's how to troubleshoot, diagnose, and replace a ignition shift lock solenoid. Thanks for watching. More videos coming soon.